We begin the exam by exposing the patient's abdomen. Next, we add plenty of gel. Then we grab our curvilinear probe. Be sure to hold the probe like a number two pencil for stability and control. Hi, I'm student Dr. Quinn. Welcome to Ultrasound Advice. Today we're going to be talking about the aortic ultrasound. This exam should be considered in all patients with suspected abdominal aortic aneurysm, which is a localized dilatation of the aorta. The prototypical patient is a 65-year-old male smoker with a history of hypertension. Like this patient here, he may be presenting with some kind of abdominal pain or pulsatile mass, but more often than not, this patient is going to be presenting completely asymptomatically. We begin our exam with a short axis view, just below the sternum, to view the aorta in cross-section. Once we have this view, it's important to establish our anatomy. We see two circles here at the top of the screen, which are the aorta and the IVC. Recall that the aorta is on the patient's left. And since it's receiving blood directly from the pumping heart, it's slightly more pulsatile than the IVC. Make sure you don't confuse these two vessels with the spine, which is right here. From here, the exam is fairly straightforward. We simply slide the transducer down until we see the aorta splitting. In this image, we're moving the transducer back and forth to show the splitting of the aorta into the two common iliac arteries. We want to be sure to identify these vessels because this is how we know we've scanned the entire length of the aorta. Once we've completed the short axis view, we want to make sure we get a long axis view as well. It's a very similar approach. We begin at the epigastrium and move inferiorly down to where the aorta splits. The long axis view allows us to visualize the celiac trunk and superior mesenteric artery. The SMA is very close to the renal vasculature, with the left renal vein actually passing just behind it. This is an important landmark because most AAAs are actually infrarenal, or below the renal arteries. Here's an image of an abnormal exam. When we think we're looking at a AAA, we freeze the image so we can take two perpendicular measurements. If the diameter is greater than 3 centimeters, we're looking at a AAA. Notice how we're measuring from outer wall to outer wall. Measuring just the diameter of the lumen would actually miss a lot of AAAs, so remember to measure from the outer wall. Okay, real quick, let's talk about treatment options. AAAs are bad because they can rupture and kill you, and the risk for rupture increases with size. If the aneurysm is between 3 and 4 centimeters, surgery is usually not indicated. If it's greater than 5.5 centimeters, surgery is indicated. If it's between 4 and 5.5, surgery may be indicated depending on the patient's risk factors. This patient actually had a AAA of 7 centimeters, so he definitely went to the OR. A few tips before we finish. If the aorta is difficult to see, you may need to press down harder or adjust the depth. In some obese patients, you may need to adjust the gain.